morning. So the plan is to meet downstairs for breakfast because we're gonna go to this event after. But this is funny, look at this. USA? No, that's not right at all. I'm Canadian. Oh, my elbow. Eight dollars. Robbery. How did you sleep? Sleep, you look like a nap last night. Two hour nap. <laughs> Tired again, man. <laughs> you ready to go to this thing? Breakfast, event, swimming, Ooh. scooters. Breakfast will wake me up, I'm hungry. Yeah, let's do it. Well, let's go. <laughs> We are in San Francisco. Woo. We got Kirk, we got Holiday. It is hot. It is I mean, hot. it's it's 50 Fahrenheit. That's 10 degrees Celsius. We're headed to find Mexican food. My favorite. A bathing suit because this guy forgot it. That's travel fail number one. No matter where you go, you bring um, a bathing suit. Listen, Pete 101, leave it in your bag. So I'm just gonna leave it in my bag next time. Not yeah. even take it out. You buy a bag yep. bathing suit. It's common sense. Let's go. You told me you knew where it was. I do know, I do know. It's that, up to the left. That doesn't mean it's you up know to the where left. it was. Like, hey, Holiday, where's the Mexican place? Uh, one block, Mexican hang a left. Place on Earth. Hang a left and look over and the guy's on Google Maps. I think it's just over here. We're in San Francisco. We're about to go to the greatest restaurant on Earth, Tropi Sueño. ¿Quieres hablar en español? En español. ¿Quiere que hablo en español? This is going well. It's supposed to be right What's it called? here. Tropi Sueño? It's supposed to be right You mean that here. place? Thanks, bud. <laughs> You're the worst, man. Okay, we're waiting for our food. Got some horchata. Amazing, magical milk drink of Central America, which is like milk and cinnamon and rice and coconut stuff. Like, it's, just look it up. It's so good. Okay, that was amazing. Now we're gonna go find Holiday a bathing suit. Do you know where Target is? You have any idea? Let me get my phone out really quick. You wanna look it up on your phone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. You know they got rid of Target in Canada? It was no. here, and then they were just like, you know what? This isn't working for us, and they just it's get gone. Out. They're gone. Fully buying this for for the wife. I'm gonna buy one for myself too. We're re-watching it right now, and it's just great. <laughs> Do you see this guy's bathing suit? You would. I mean, Look it's amazing. That. That's great. Yeah. That's probably the best bathing suit I've ever seen. Love is love. Love is love. I Bindo, bindo. All right. Before we get out and get to the meat of this video, which is how to not take photos like tourists, I need to make a quick important phone call. Hey, Bill, I'm just wondering what time the pool closes at. 10 p.m.? That's great. See you there. <laughs> That guy was awesome. He's like, I might just come up and join you up there. I don't really know what to think about that, but uh, 10 p.m. Closes at 10. I'm ready. Let's do this. Oh, it's super windy, so the wind noise is probably insane because the Golden Gate Bridge, if you've ever been here, the wind is just, it's always, it's non-stop. It's just, it's, ah. I want to talk to you guys about how to take photos not like a tourist. What do I mean by that? That looks safe. 
Okay, so I found like a nice quiet little area where I could say a few things because that wind is insane. I'm, I'm very sorry ahead of time. So coming to San Francisco, everyone obviously wants to shoot the Golden Gate Bridge. It's like the most iconic bridge ever probably, or at least one of them. But the thing is like, how do you get the angles that no one else gets? How do you make sure that your photos stand out from every other photographer's photos that are standing there doing the exact same thing with all of their tripod set up? Now, sometimes those photos are great to get, but how do we get creative with it? How do we find those angles that don't make us look like tourists or don't make our photos look like everyone else's photos? We wanna stand out a little bit more. So I'm here with my friend Jude Allen, his Instagram tag, whoop, right here. Incredible photographer, lives in San Francisco. Let's run through a few of his shots. Each one of these shots is of the same bridge, but just from angles that you don't ever typically really get to see. And that's what makes those photos so unique because they're not just the same static shots from the top lookout point that everybody in the world gets. They're through trees, we're shooting through objects, we're finding different vantages from low, from the side, from the top, from the bottom, from every which way, which makes these photos so much better and gives them that professional look. So I'm gonna ask him what he does to find photos like this in the city that he lives in. Okay, so this is Jude. I met, Jude, I met Jude in LA uh, in August and we were able to shoot, Lag was it Laguna Beach? Uh, yeah, Laguna Beach. Yeah, okay, so my question is, how do you find those angles? Do you find them through like other photographers? Do you have buddies that tell you where the good spots are or is it wandering? I just wanna know your thoughts. First thing I like to do is walk around a certain area and check out different perspectives and see what stands out to me before I start shooting. So you don't just come in guns blazing, get the shot, you kinda wanna figure out what the best shot is instead of just setting up right away. I like it. Pete, why are you crouching right now? It's the light and the wind. I've, I've been having to find places to hide myself so that the, the viewers don't. Well, where we're going, there's gonna be a lot of wind, so we'll go crouch behind a rock. See you at the rock. Let's go. Okay. Holiday wants to hike down the entire side of the mountain. Go, Pete. Come on, man. I guess we're hiking down the side of the mountain. Windy. I will not throw you this camera. This part looks sketchy. You go here, little, little action like this, foot, like a pro. You good? Made it. We made it. Made it. All right. We're crouching behind some big beach rocks to get that nice shade. But Jude just brought up a great point because we just hiked the face of this cliff instead of taking the stairs. Yeah, we just uh, took the side of the hill here at Marshall Beach just to get down here quicker. It's about probably 30, 40 minutes quicker so that we don't miss the good light that's about to happen here. Sometimes when you're out going to a new spot, um, it's not always best to kind of follow the beaten path. If you can take another way, you might see some things along the way that you might be able to shoot. So that's always an option as well. I like that, I think that's good. We were just discussing like, a lot of the times like the, the set out, like the clear path where it's like, hey, take the stairs to the lookout point. You're kind of being fielded to the area where all the shots are always taken or the tourists want to hang out, like the California park and rack whatever whomever probably sets up all the safety stuff for this is, is kind of like this is where you should go and you should go nowhere else if you're gonna stay on those paths that's totally fine and that's safe and it's probably advised but not staying on them and finding your own way is gonna yield some of those super unique shots that you see all over this guy's Instagram so one of the things we're thinking about as we're waiting for golden hour down here on the beach is framing your subject when you're shooting portraits. It's such a small little move for you to make that's gonna make your photos look so much better by just having your subject, your friend, whomever you're shooting, move a little bit. You can see my friend Holiday standing. He's blocking that. I guess that's the south tower of the Golden Gate Bridge. Just having him take a half step to the left to be in between both the north and the south tower, that shot is gonna be composed so much better. Be aware of framing and where people are standing. You don't want that tower coming out of his head. That's not gonna look good. You don't want trees and poles and, and all kinds of stuff growing out of people. You wanna make sure that framing, that composition is done nicely and it's just, it's just moving people around. Like you're playing chess with people. Get them to the spot you need to frame them up nice. Hey Peter, since you're always jumping in your photos, why don't we have you jump off one of these rocks over here for a good frame? I always love jumping shots, so that's a good idea. On the note of framing, let's frame this. Look at that. 
Light's amazing right now. We're gonna shoot Golden Gate from the beach, but I want some of that. I want some of those bubbles coming up. But you gotta like time it, and I don't wanna get my feet wet. This is the dilemma that I am faced with this moment in time. Nope, nope, nope. Ah! Down, down, down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are you doing? You're gonna get I'm trying to get the shot. <laughs> oh. oh, this is hard after a snowmobile accident. Yeah. How are you making out? I taste blood. Yeah, definitely. We were just down there. Just back from the unpacked event. It was uh, pretty cool with all the lights and the graphics and the screen wrapped around the whole building and it was like it was quite impressive like i found it very well you really are ready to go yeah. let's go <laughs> come on man that folding the phone looks cool top, that? Yeah, yeah yeah it was pretty cool but uh swim time as promised i just love to go to a hotel get in the pool for like five minutes no matter where it is you got to get in at least once switching over to the gopro got the swim out of my system. We're gonna go find some scooters in a minute, but I hope for the people that enjoyed seeing those tips in this video that it was helpful to you. The reason I wanted to kind of sprinkle these tips into this vlog was for a lot of the new people that have subscribed to the channel and people that are starting off in photography that are more beginners than advanced. It's sometimes a very fine line between taking a photo that looks like a, a touristy shot. Sometimes it's, it's there's not a whole lot of work involved to get it to look like a more professional photo. And some of those tips I think will really help you get there. Like you saw the difference from all the tourists way up when we climb that hill that were all walking around snapping their photos to zero people on the beach like nobody at all and that angle is a lot more creative and photogenic and it's composed better and just everything about where we were on that beach was better than everything above on the lookout where everybody was and that is it that's the small little adjustment that we made that makes the huge difference so when you show someone a picture hey look I was at the Golden Gate and you got like 16 people below you in that frame snapping photos and then I I show a picture, here's my golden gate. Everyone's like, why is that so much better? Gear aside, experience aside, it's because I was in a better spot. And sometimes it doesn't take a lot of work to just find that better spot. So that's why we decided to make the video today. And you can see that from all the examples of Jude's photos that we dropped earlier in this video. Like it's not that hard to do. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. With that being said, we're gonna go find some scooters now because I would love to get on some of those and rip a little bit before we have to head to the airport and take the red eye home. Yeah, we're taking the red it leaves at like 10, flies through the night, and we get back to Toronto nice and early. So uh, the day that you watch this, while you're watching this, is the same day I returned home. How's that for speed? See you guys in the next video. Peace. Came through tripping Aquafina, I'm sipping 15, kept a weapon on me. Blow make bitches, I'm on my business, stack chicken like what it's gonna be. Crew in the cut, hey, you want us for a run when I tell a peace. Adi.